welcome to the Open Active Adoption Engagement Forum on uh, Wednesday, the 29th of May, uh, 2024. Thank you, uh, everyone, very much for joining us. I will start with uh, usual reminders. If any of you um, are watching on the call or uh, here today who are new to Open Active, then please do uh, think about joining our Open Active Slack workspace. Um, it's free to, to register and join, and there's a link on the slide. Um, and if you're watching uh, the recording, uh, if you check the description down below um, the video, then um, there'll be a link through to these slides, um, so you can you can have a look there. Um, but please do join us there. It's a great place to keep in touch with everything going on with Open Active, um, communicate and collaborate with with other people in the community, and, and get all the latest updates. Um, so please do join us there. Uh, Quick look at um, what we've got on the agenda for today's meeting. So I'll start with a, a quick round of introductions, as we usually do, just to help everyone get to know um, who's on the call and, and other people in the community. Um, then we've got Baden here from Paralympics GB stroke uh, Everybody Moves, who's going to give a quick introduction to, to Everybody Moves and, and what it is and what it's all about. Um, then we've got Darren here from the ODI, who's going to summarise um, a session that uh, the ODI ran in, in partnership with uh, Everybody Moves and their Lived Experience Advisory Board and, and some of the findings from, from that workshop. Um, and then we're going to go back to Baden again, um, who's going to outline um, some uh, exciting upcoming opportunities with Everybody Moves uh, and the upcoming Paralympics. And, and then we'll have time for a, a bit of a discussion um, about, uh, you know, what, what's being covered in the meeting uh, and what's coming up. So, uh, as I say, I'll start with a quick round of introductions. So I'll start with myself. I'm Tim Corby. I work for an organisation called the Open Data Institute, and we have a small group of us um, at the ODI who are funded by Sport England to steward the Open Active Initiative, um, which is uh, the role I am uh, playing on the call today. Um, and with that, I'll go to my uh, two colleagues who are also on the call first, or three colleagues, I think. Uh, Andrew, I'll come to you first. Uh, thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Newman. I'm the Principal Data Specialist here at the Open Data Institute, and I lead our work around Open Active. Um, apologies, I've got a bit of a dodgy internet connection today, so I may disappear and reappear. Great, thank you. Andrew, uh, Howard? Hello, Howard Askew, Data Technologist at the Open Data Institute, also working on the Open Active Initiative. But my, I'm going to leave my camera off today because I'm just, just here in the background and the signal's not great. Thanks, Howard. And uh, Darren? Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Darren Temple. I'm a consultant here at the ODI wearing a technologist for the uh, Open Active uh, project. Brilliant. Thanks, Darren. And then uh, just in no particular order, just uh, where you are on my screen, uh, Yasmin? Hi, I'm Yasmin. I work for Active Kent and Medway, um, and I lead on our Activity Finder, which is Open Active. Great. Thanks, Yasmin. Uh, John? Hi everybody, uh, John Stonebridge, a network development partner for Mencap Sport. Um, if you're not aware of Mencap, a charity that focuses primarily for people with learning disabilities. Great, thank you, John. Uh, great to see you here on the call. Uh, Jason? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Jason, um, head of programme change in place for Access Sport. Um, Access Sport are a national charity that uh, look to effectively um, support children and young people to gain access to sport and physical activity so really trying to work with community organizations and clubs to try and reduce barriers essentially and 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 become more sustainable as, as clubs as well so um yeah that's that that's me and i'm glad i'm here with my colleague shana as well she'll be able to tell you a little bit about us too great thank you very much jason i'll come to you then next shana Hi everyone. Yeah, I'll, um, thanks Jason for explaining Access Sport. It means I don't have to do the spiel as well. Um, I lead on our Inclusive Club Network, which is the network of all of the clubs that we've supported since 2021. Um, and yeah, and just trying to keep in contact with them all and, and keep that engagement going as the club development stuff kind of comes to an end. So yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. And great to meet you. Uh, Nicola. Hi everyone, um, my name is Nicola File. I work for Activity Alliance. Um, you may well have met my colleague Jess, who was part of these calls before. Um, she's moved on uh, to uh, the RDA, so I'm stepping in in her place. Great, thank you, Nicola, and lovely to see you. Uh, Ian. 
Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Ian Turney. I'm the CEO of the charity um, Wheels for All. We're a national inclusive cycling charity and we have a range of hubs that operates across the country and we're really keen to just um, bring the work that we do to ODI and all other partners here today. So thank you for inviting me, Tim. No problem and thanks for joining. Really great to see you. Um, Jules. Hi, uh, yes, uh, I'm Jules from the Octobot Foundation. I've uh, been interested in, in this open active for quite a while. I hope to might get a new friend on today, Alan Samuel from Paris, who phoned me about a Playways activity finder they're trying to put in. They're having discussions about unmoderated activity. And I told them just because Amazon sells bleach, you have to decide not to drink it. So yeah, we can see what happens. <laughs> great, thank you, Jules. Um, Grace. Hi, yeah, yeah, I'm Grace. I work for Somerset Activity and Sports Partnership as an Open Data Project Officer. Um, so I look after their Activity Finder. Brilliant. Thanks, Grace. And thank you very much, everyone, for, for joining. Great to great to see you all um, here today and great to meet some new faces as well. Um, and I haven't um, missed him out because I don't like him. It's uh, did, did, I deliberately left Baden to last because he is first up on the agenda. So I thought it'd be easiest to just switch to you, Baden, and then uh, you can introduce yourself and, and seamlessly flow straight into your um, into your slides. So over to you, Baden. I would expect nothing less, Tim. Thanks for that. Um, great to meet everybody and thanks for joining the call and um, giving me and us your time today. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Baden. I work at Paralympics GB in the social impact and communication side of our uh, organisation and specifically on the Everybody Moves programme. Um, so it was formerly Parasport, some of you may know it from that original guys, uh, but that's kind of morphed now and become uh, Everybody Moves as we uh, move into a different chapter of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, Tim, I'm aware you're driving, so if uh, I'll just say next slide and we'll do that thing. Thank you. Um, so we always start with something nice and cheesy because they're the best things and why not? Um, so as Paralympics GB, our, our overall vision is through sport to inspire a better world for disabled people. Um, when that comes to the social impact side, Tim, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, that forms three main programmes at the moment. Um, so we have Everybody Moves that sits in our, our grassroots participation and community side of things. We have Get Set in collaboration with Team GB that looks at young people in, in schools, um, inclusive PE and resources. Some really exciting things have gone on there just recently. And beyond the podium that looks more towards our corporate partnerships and how those activations go uh, from there. Uh, so Tim, if we can roll on to the next one from there. So in a nutshell, everybody moves. Um, it's our overarching aim to champion inclusion and enable and empower disabled people to become more active uh, in a way that suits the individual. Um, and this is kind of where we move from para sport with it being very sport related uh, to look more at movement and the ways that um, we can just help enable that across the whole country. Um, our main way that we function with that is our online platform and activity finder, uh, which is open active compliant. So we are both a contributor and um, digester, if there's a better word for that, um, of uh, open data. And uh, some of the people in the room today, I'm aware of the feeds that you contribute to that. So that's um, that's awesome. And thank you on, on that behalf. Um, and on that, we can't achieve our ambitions alone. So we're always looking for our approach to be a collaborative one. Uh, working in partnership to try and reach those shared goals that many of the other people in this room actually share together. So that's kind of where we sit. Um, overarching, it's just that grassroots participation side um, and uh, yeah, just trying to get people more active in a way that suits them. If we can go to the, uh, the next slide, please. Yeah. So one of the kind of founding principles that we have with Everybody Moves is co-production. So um, that may be a new uh, kind of concept for everybody. So I'll just kind of touch on it in its very simplest terms. Um, and that's where right from the outset, you're looking to bake in and involve um, a group of people that may ultimately be the people that you're trying to serve, but to give everybody in that, um, that kind of meeting space an equal voice so that it's not just something that's tagged on at the end. It's not just a checklist. It's actually a collaborative working way of going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a few people, uh, sorry a few different versions of that on there but um yeah please feel free to look into that and that's something that we wholeheartedly believe in uh if you can go to the next slide please now the greatest example of that really for us um was where we brought together our lived experience advisory board so we went out and uh we recruited 12 members of the disabled community so six people in this um lineup are ex-paralympic athletes and the other six from the wider disabled community 
and they actually help advise, steer, and actually co-produce a lot of what goes on at Everybody Moves. And now even wider that that um, co-production opportunity is spread across the whole of Paralympics GB. Most recently, uh, we have upcoming our kitting out process where all the athletes will come together and get their kit back. So it's like a really exciting time. There's lots going on. Um, and even as Paralympics GB, we, we're always trying to get it better. We're always trying to just evolve it. And the Lived Experience Advisory Board gave some amazing insight into how that process is going to evolve. And they will actually be the first people to run the kitting out process as a final check, just to make sure that everything's in place or where tweaks can be made. So yeah, it's huge for us to have um, such a resource at our disposal. Uh, no, so I suppose as our um, you know, kind of uh, there to help us with things going forward. Um, the biggest one, if we can just go to the next slide, please then. Um, the biggest one for us was actually when we evolved from being para sport to being everybody moves. And that came as a direct bit of feedback from the lab uh, where para made it sound elite and sport made it sound like it was only sport. It was not something for activities or just ways of movement. So that saw us actually then evolve into this new state where we are today. And we're really happy that we've been able to share um, access to that resource with our friends at ODI. Uh, most recently, um, with Darren coming on to a session. So, Darren, if I can pass over to you, you might be able to introduce uh, what we got up to in that session. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so, at its core, it's important to remember that Open Active is a set of standards with the ability to evolve. Just in the way that um, Baden was saying about the name, um, changing from uh, Parasport to every sport based on, on uh, feedback and information, at its core, Open Active can do the same. So there's flexibility that can respond to the needs of various communities, from developers uh, making apps and tools to people actually seeking activities. So we wanted to find out about the experiences of the community uh, with various impairments, from physical to visual. Um, we had a subset of this community from the Everybody Moves Lived uh, Experience Advisory Board, LAB, uh, which we, the ODI's Open Active representatives, were invited to join and speak to the community directly. Now, we framed this part of the uh, session, which was a whole morning session run by Baden and his co-workers, but we had a, a little half-hour slot within that. And we framed it around um, six questions, basically. There was four core questions and two bonus questions given time. So we'll take them in, in, in the order that they were presented and just have a look at the uh, responses. So this was delivered by a platform uh, called Menti, um, which has very good accessibility features um, uh, that people can scan a QR code and access on their phone. And it was just a series um, of uh, various questions, mostly multiple choice and yes, no questions and one to five scales and so on. So the, 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 the overall themes of the questions in general were about like, where do they get their information? How good is it currently? What would make it better? And how do they get more information if needed? So if we jump to the next slide, Tim. And so this was the first question as it was posed. So how do you usually get information about sports and activities? So we gave six different options there. And it's a little bit too, <laughs> too small even on my own screen to read. So let me just expand this a little bit. Um, we had the first option was basically word of mouth. Second option, social media. Third option, just a general search engine such as Google or Bing. Um, fourth option, local resources such as might um, be issued from a, a local council. Fifth option was the Everybody Moves website themselves. And sixth and final option was just some other sports and, and, and activity app that they, they might find. And what we um, could see in uh, issuing this question that there was very, very clear um, answers that it was either social media or just a general search engine. This is the, the, the real kind of go-to places that people get their information. And um, the uh, social media was a clear standout. And in some follow-up kind of questions with the, with the crowd, we would say, what, what do you like about social media? Why is it so great? And um, it's because of basically the, the, the kind of friend aspect and, and um, different sports and activities being um, kind of given the thumbs up, sometimes quite literally on certain platforms by their friends. Like, I've done this, this is great. Here's my pictures. Here's a link to go and find it yourself. So is that, that chain of interaction via people um, that, that, that they know that was really kind of drawing them in and also gave them that kind of inspiring factor as well. When they see their, their friends doing other things, they're like, yeah, you know what? I can give that a crack as well. And then the next biggest one just being a general search engine. So just really employing their, the very 
um, broad umbrella sweep that search engines take and that people just have it very entrenched that if they don't know something in particular, this grand oracle that we have online these days is going to be able to fish it out um, with a, this great trawl from the oceans of data that, that are out there. So that's where the information comes from. How well did people uh, typically find that that served their needs? So if we jump to the next slide, what we see here is a beautiful normal distribution, perfectly centered on the mean there of three stars. So that spike there of six uh, responses, uh, one on the two star, uh, one on the four star. So what we can clearly see here is like people were basically saying it's okay in general, not fantastic, not too bad. It kind of largely gets the job done typically, um, but it would be nice to have this in the future, something to aim for as, as us as technology developers and service providers is to really kind of push this more to the right hand side. We want to have those four stars and five stars very much dominating that that three star. Uh, the three star middle of the road is, uh, you know, doing OK, could do better for sure. So if we jump onto the next slide and look at the third question that we uh, asked people in the LAB group. Um, so this was a little bit more specific for this community. So we were looking at impairment tags and how they actually find these tags. Are they good enough for their needs? This is the extra little bit of information that they really need, which is either driving them to go and do something or maybe deterring them based on, on the information that is uh, readily available to them. So when specific impairment tags are present, they're not always present, but when they are, are they typically useful? And there was an overwhelming response, which is actually yes. Now, this was great uh, to hear. It means that the services which are out there have already done a, a pretty good job at, at summarizing um, the needs as they currently stand. And uh, any other services looking to springboard off the top of that don't have to go back and reinvent the wheel. We can just look at the information which is already there, um, check and verify, it, and then shape it to our needs. So this is something very much to bear in mind for the future development of, of Open Active. Don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, we can very much rely on what the, all the good work that's already been done out there. If we jump to the fourth question, uh, this was now a free text question. So rather than pigeonholing people into multiple choice, we just allowed them to provide us uh, short sentences or one word answers of whatever um, they would like to, to say in response to the question of what kind of extra information would you want? So we talked about impairment tags, but anything else there? So uh, this is our little word cloud that kind of uh, came out of this. So directions for access, in particular, what isn't available? This is something which we focused on on the um, following discussion from this question. What isn't available is also very valuable to find out um, as very much alongside what is available. Rather than omitting something, if it's not available, it will be better to explicitly say, we don't have this. So having lists of uh, specialized uh, equipment, hoists in swimming pools and, and stuff like that, it would be better to actually see that field with the answer no rather than being omitted because then you're just asking people to call up the center afterwards or take a few extra steps and it just it provides a, a little higher barrier to entry basically so the types of access parking age ranges video description would really help on the accessibility front so that um, you don't have to rely on screen readers or text and things like that a few things around the word cloud that you can see which are all related to transport. So transport pipe and types of access and so on and so forth. So that was the flavor of those responses. So they were the big kind of four questions that we that we really um, got answers uh, from the group and all really useful here. You can kind of see the full data journey from uh, the information sources to the quality, uh, what they already have and what they would like. So if we jump on to the next question, so this is very much running into bonus time. We kind of like slip this one in here quickly. This is why the, the answers were a little bit sparse. And um, there was only one on the one and, and, and two on the yes in terms of these responses and numbers. So do you often need to contact organizers for further information about specific needs? And um, the answer there were by the marginal one above the, the, the other was, was yes, basically. All the information isn't always there in what they currently have, given those tags and, and the extra desired information that they would prefer. So they do um, sometimes have to make that phone call. It's not all online. And then literally just ask a human over the phone. 
The sixth and final question kind of brings this to a little close in that journey. If we jump to the next slide, which is, can the organizers usually answer your questions as and when you do contact them? And thankfully, um, six to one, the answer was yes to the no. Um, so that means that the people on the other end of the phone, uh, even though it's not ideal having to uh, always go down that, that route, that does mean that they do have the extra information readily available and they can supply it to people to give them the confidence they need to go and partake in, in that particular sports or activities, um, which is great. But again, it's just that little kind of higher barrier to entry that means that people do have to make that extra step to be comfortable and confident that they, they can actually um, participate. So that was the summary of the session um, based on, on those six questions, the four core and these two bonus at the end. Um, it was really great to hear the discussion and all the extra comments that I've mentioned a few along the way. And it's helped us to uh, begin to inform our approach in Open Active as we consider the next steps for helping that standard to evolve. That's it for me. Fantastic. Great. Thank you, Darren. Um, really interesting uh, to hear the summary of, um, of the session you ran, some, some really interesting insights, which we, we can dive into a bit more in, in the discussion later in, in the call. Um, but just before that, um, I'll come back to Baden, who's um, got a few more slides um, uh, and talk about some new opportunities uh, upcoming this summer with uh, Everybody Moves. And then uh, following that, we can we can dive into some sort of questions and, and discussion. So, Baden, yeah. over to you again. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, um, slide please, Tim, that'd be great. Um, there's some additional input from the lab. Um, so this isn't the first session that we've run relating to listings or um, open active as a whole. Um, some of the big take homes that we've had from uh, the lab when we've put a range of sessions in front of them, uh, both how they present in a search, but then also what that detail looks like when you click through. Um, and some of those those kind of um, overriding and overarching themes have come to who is the session actually for? Um, again, it's it's just been really clear um, around, and this kind of links in with the last one of like, what does inclusive actually mean? Uh, what we're seeing a lot is, and it's great, where sessions are more adaptive and inclusive so that you've got disabled and non-disabled people taking part in the activity together, which is great. And an example of that was uh, me with my mum, and we go and play boccia. Um, at least once a month. And that's that's really great for that to be a thing. So just being really upfront with that. Um, another example is uh, South Essex Gymnastics Club, who were one of our club of the months. And nearly all of their gymnastic sessions are actually inclusive. But in the description, that wasn't overly evident. So we worked with South Essex just to put a little bit of a change in on the wording. So when it comes to listings, yeah, be really upfront about who it's for. Um, if it's a very specific one, just be again upfront with that. Uh, some of the uh, the next one was kind of touched on in the word cloud. So providing accessibility information is one of the biggest ones that came back from the lab, and they just they just wanted to know more. You know, what what's it going to be like when I get there? Is there a change in places? Is there um, accessible toilets? Is there a ramp? All of those kind of things. Um, with the impairment categories, uh, one of the slides showed that it was exceptionally helpful, which is, I think, where it adds a little bit more weighting behind this one, that some of the tags that we currently use um, as part of that standard could do with a little update. Um, there's some slightly outdated language that's um, kind of in there um, that the disabled community felt could just be updated just that little bit extra to bring it into 2024. Um, so they're just four of the big ones just to touch on um, just there. Um, so if I can go to the next slide, please, Tim, just to leave you with this, this is one of the comments that came out and it really struck a chord with me that is no disabled person has ever complained about being given too much information. So just when you're coming to your listings or thinking how you're going to put that information out there, no one's ever complained that you've told them too much. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Or when you're reaching out to clubs to get the information from them for your listings. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. There's, there's never such a thing as too much information. Perfect. Um, again, we can dive deeper into that. I'm here for questions on it, but uh, you may or may not be aware there's a fairly large sports day up and coming. So um, this uh, was when we had the absolute honour of taking over Piccadilly Circus uh, for 100 days to go. Um, and it is creeping up exceptionally fast. I say creeping, it's actually running towards us exceptionally fast now, uh, the Paralympic Games. And um, we are very, very fortunate um, to have been offered an opportunity. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please, Tim. Um, and it's something that we really feel is um, huge for the Everybody Moves program, but also for 
ODI and indeed every single person that's involved with Open Active, I think it's a great opportunity coming up. And that is that Everybody Moves will be the primary signposted activity finder during the Paralympic coverage on Channel 4. So what that looks like is going to be a minimum of four QR codes per day. Some of that will just simply be that QR code showing. Some will be uh, pre-recorded VT where Channel 4 have gone out to uh, different clubs or activities and they've taken some of their talent out to pre-record that. Um, and we've just got that baseline of four at a minimum. Um, there's a conversion and a very conservative conversion of um, around about half to 1% of viewers to a QR code. And uh, if we go on that, the Tokyo games are taking that as a kind of rough ballpark for it. This is this is where we're at, that they're expecting well over 20 million viewers over the course of that. Um, and that's because with Tokyo, the time zones made it a little bit less uh, favorable to watch. Um, so we're expecting a, a very conservative estimate around about 50,000 visitors to the website daily. Um, and that will all be traffic driven to bespoke landing pages. Um, some will be quite broad, as in search for an activity. Some will be a little bit more targeted. So it might be something that's shown during cycling, let's say, or athletics. And as that comes through, that will actually then have um, a few different options of a pathway for people to go. So that might be, hey, help me find some cycling activities in my local area. Um, it might be, tell me more about this specific, it might be botcher, tell me more about botcher. Um, and there's also some data collection touch points for us within that as well. But needless to say, I think this is absolutely massive um, to get that kind of exposure on just for the program as a general thing. So we're really hoping that this will not only boost participation for disabled people within sport and physical activity, but also really raise the profile of uh, the Open Data Institute and Open Active as a whole and all of the amazing work that each and individual one of you are all doing already. Um, so all of those listings that you have, if they're showing on our website, they're there for people to uh, to find as well. So that's that's kind of really where this opportunity lies. Uh, if we could go to the, the next slide, please, Tim. So I just pulled this off today. Um, so from the overall feed, there's uh, 174,700 sessions. Um, and of those, uh, just shy of 5,000 were actually tagged either with keywords that we uh, filter through with Iman or that actually have the impairment type ticked, that means that they'll come through to the Everybody Moves platform. So that's around 2.9%, which is, it's good. Um, and that's above what it was when I first started with Paralympics GB. There was some outreach work done uh, through Iman and ourselves to um, everyone active and GLL, some of the bigger players that have actually helped up that number. Uh, and I know that uh, it also gets skewed. I know that um, London Sport, it's around about 50%. So there is, there's a whole range within there, but there is a massive opportunity to actually close that accessibility gap. Are there any low hanging fruit that we're missing where it's just simply looking at the wording, again, of the descriptions of your sessions? Is it where we just need to take another look at the impairment categories, those kind of things. And when we think the disabled community represents around 20% of the UK population, there's actually a really, really huge opportunity here. So very excited to, to share that with you. Uh, Tim, if we can roll to the next slide, please. Um, so yeah, just a couple of things that we came to to kind of throw into the mix to just get us thinking about things or start that conversation. And one is kind of having a look at those sessions and how we can we can sort that gap out. What what can we do there that's a fairly easy win for each and every one of us? Um, it would also be nice if it's something that we can uh, explore whether or not there's a modernization of those impairment categories. If we're going to open the finder up to that many people, let's make sure the language used is is modern and applicable. Something that we've been uh, exploring just recently is a club style listing, just where, for all intents and purposes, an open, an, a regular open active session, um, just for the time and date data chopped off. Um, that's just a bit of feedback we've had from uh, NGBs, uh, where Barry is in that meeting with them just now, uh, where a lot want to bulk upload. And again, even when they bulk upload with us, that's then being distributed um, out across the uh, the open active network. So that's that's there for everybody to consume then. So we're really Really excited about that. Um, the accessibility information, again, that's just taking the lab's feedback. What what can we all do there to just try and help those listings be the best? Let's say somebody's come on that journey and they're there looking at it. How do they know that that's the right session for them? And that kind of ties in with having really great informative listings. Going back to that one slide of no disabled person has ever really complained about being given too much information. 
how can we make sure that listings again that we're providing for people on this opportunity are the best that they can be so i'm super excited about this channel for opportunity i've been sat in a few of these meetings and the the figures that they're throwing around are absolutely enormous uh, in terms of what we'd expect to see coming through the site and that means so much for every single one of us that are providing inclusive activities so excited to share the opportunity with every single one of you and, and look at the ways that we can um, make this the best opportunity for everyone that it can be so thanks Fantastic. Thank you very much, Baden. Um, I, I share your excitement and uh, it feels like a, a really fantastic opportunity. Um, so we've got kind of still got 15, 20 minutes left uh, left on the call with, with a bit of wiggle room at the end for um, for any other business, if, if there's anything that people want to raise. But we just wanted to open up um, the, the room really and, and the call for a, a quite an open discussion around some of the stuff that, that Darren and Baden have both shared um, and some of the, the potential questions and opportunities uh, and how we can best capitalise on, on this opportunity that, that Baden's highlighted for, for the upcoming games in, in a couple of months' time. So um, just a couple of questions, and I see a couple of hands already going up, so I'll come to you in a second, but just a couple of questions just to kind of um, steer that and get you thinking. But uh, as I say, really happy for it to be quite an open discussion, so, so don't feel feel restricted um it, you know if you've got any thoughts or or questions or comments on, on anything um related to the to what Baden and, and Darren have shared then then that'd be great um but yeah I mean how can we encourage more publishers of, of open active data that are already publishing um to to include more uh, and more appropriate information and more information about accessibility uh, when they're describing their activities as Baden highlighted there's a bit of a gap there in, in the feeds that are already being published how, how can we better give guidance to providers uh, and um, and publishers of data feeds to, to make sure they're in, including as much information and as accurate information as possible and then how can we encourage more providers to of inclusive activities to, to open their data we've got this fantastic opportunity um, to to get a lot of coverage and a, and a lot of reach and and, uh, and get more people finding these activities. So how can we get as much as possible um, published in in the next few months and really capitalise on that opportunity? Uh, and then finally, which is something that came up with um, the the findings Darren shared from from the workshop we ran with the lived experience advisory board is how how can we use open active data in other ways. Um, and get it in front of people in in other platforms and in other places, which which they're maybe using more. You know, places like social media and search engines, which were the the two that they particularly highlighted as where they're going to get that information. How, how can we get information um, into some of those uh, places? Um, you know, better from from open active feeds. Um, so I see a couple of of hands have gone up already. Uh, Jules, I'll come to you first. I think you you were first. Why is it always Jules? Why <laughs> is it always? Uh, yeah, no, it it looks brilliant. I'm having a good look around. It it appears to have a uh, a club database, which I've been bagging on about. So brilliant. Who who built it? And is there a kind of tagging system, or does does it just pull all open data in? Um, that being the Everybody Moves website, Jules. Yeah. Yeah. Define yeah. it. So the the club section, if you've gone onto the search there, you'll have upcoming sessions that shows things uh, within the next two weeks. You've then got the, the club section and then our online section. And the online section really came into its own during COVID, which um, actually ended up winning Everybody Moves an Award. Um, free me, sadly. Um, but the, the club finder element of it is actually more of a legacy data. So that's actually more of a static listing. What we're looking to do um, and, and that's part of the new club listing style uh, session that we want to, to try and create in time for the games is essentially take what is an open active listing, shave off the time and date data, and then that goes out as a separate feed or where other people are actually contributing to that feed. Um, so that's where we want to make sure it is, you know, kind of ODI approved. Um, and then what will actually happen is on those search results where it says upcoming sessions, there'll be two API calls essentially out. One will pull in the open active sessions and one will pull in what would be essentially the club data. So all of those things that you're seeing in the club data part there, we're going to get in touch with everyone to move them over into that new format uh, and go that way. Um, your other question was who built it? Um, 
I dare say behind the scenes, it is like a bit of Play-Doh that's had lots of bits shoved into it over time. <laughs> and um, The original and ongoing build um, is by a company called Coherence. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of where they've gone with that so far. And it is almost an evolution um, of what was originally there. And I dare say if we set out to build it from scratch, which we may do post games, I think it might look very different to what it is just now. I'm, I'm aware it is a little of its time. No, it, lo it looks very good. It has both the activities and the clubs, which I think is uh, it's essential. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, impressed. Right. There is a little Aiden. bit of ongoing work just now um, that's going to see the results um, section and the searching element of it updated. Uh, and also the uh, upload process for clubs um, is also being redone. Um, so we'll see that phased uh, on implementation uh, in July and August. Um, so the different elements of that, the, the upload section first in July, and then the actual search elements of that uh, beginning of August, ready to be tested, and then it's ready for games. Great. Thanks, Baden, and, and thanks, Jules. I think you um, should probably just add in there, um, Baden, as well, that you, you one of your partners is Imin as well. So so they're a big part of the um, work to, to pull open active data into into the site oh yeah that was super question sorry um yes uh we uh we have a curated feed from iman um so very much all of the data that people in this room are contributing to that um we're, we're then pulling in a curated feed that forms part of those upcoming listings uh from there as well as essentially sending our own listings out into the feed to be drawn back in Thanks, Baden. Uh, Jason, I think you were uh, next. Sorry, Jason, I think you're still muted. Sorry. Perfect. I, I was, one of the things I was going to say is that I'm uh, by no means a tech expert and I've, I've demonstrated that perfectly. Um, yeah, one of the reasons I was keen to sort of come onto this call really was just to try and develop my understanding around the whole um open data piece really um i i first came into contact with it about two years ago um and then it's sort of come back on my radar again in the last few months really but uh, i would say that my knowledge of it is 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 is, is patchy um I, I quickly my understanding is is that um there is a piece of work that all of the active partnerships are doing um and i and i may be wrong on that so again i'm, I'm really hoping that um you can all correct me uh, wherever i am wrong but my understanding is that the active partnerships are running their own uh, activity finders really which is kind of driven by that kind of open data piece so uh, i suppose my question is a have i understood that correctly and then if i have is this in addition to that, or is it actually this is now the defined portal platform for um, individuals looking to access information about uh, sport and physical activity for disabled people? Does any of that make sense? It does. Thanks. I reckon, I reckon I've got you. Uh, I think, Thank you. Uh, uh, do, do you want to jump in, Baden? Or, or... Uh, I think on um, probably the last point, um, there are a lot of activity finders out there doing amazing things, and by no means are we we looking to monopolize on that in any way, shape, or form. Um, in the same way that uh, some of those uh, finders may be created more for a specific area, um, that's brilliant. You know that that gives a really. It's ultimately it's about trying to get somebody to where they need to be, and I think it's important to remember that. Um, and for us, as everybody moves, we just like to think to ourselves as a truly massive shop window to show everything that's already there. Um, if we could become the one stop shop for disabled people looking to be um, more active, that'd be great. Um, but we know we can't do that alone. And that's where actually, if you already have an activity finder, how can we help you open up your data? Is it already open data compliant? How can we help tag that? Essentially, how can we help share? those listings around so that regardless of whether they come to everybody moves or they go to um insert activity finder um that's that's kind of it but it's just to say as well with that opportunity that we've got coming up with the paralympic games um that's that's something that we just want to share with everybody and if you have your own activity finder how do we help you open that up how can we link you with partners to really help that be a thing without any hard work on your side Equally as well, if you don't currently have that capacity or the resource isn't there to do that, 
there's a way to upload with us and, and we can help do that as well. So it's just trying to get as many on there as we can. Um, did you want to dive in on the first part of the question, Tim? Yeah, sure, sure. I, I can I can come in on that. And so, yeah, just to tackle the the sort of what exactly is open active and how it works you're you're sort of roughly right in in a lot of the things you say jason but it maybe didn't quite capture the the whole picture so open active as an initiative is um essentially a kind of data initiative initiative and digital transformation initiative in in the sports sector um and it aims to make it easier for people to share information and data about activities um more easily and more efficiently so that's you know what time the activity is where it is and um, what equipment you might need if there are any restrictions on who can take part in the activity you know all that kind of information that's really important for someone to decide whether an activity is appropriate or not for them um and the heart of open active is essentially a set of data standards which standardize the way um, people describe activities. So, you know, making sure we're all using the same language and the same terminology. Um, and then on the other hand, um, also a way to standardize the, the technical side of it, the, the way data is shared from a technical point of view, the format, um, you know, the technical format um, and all of that kind of stuff. And part of that side of it is, is being able to share the data as, as open data as well. The, the open data bit, um, the advantage it has, which sort of, comes to talk to the second part of the question as well, which which Baden touched on. The open data side of it um, means that uh, an activity provider, uh, you know, uh, uh, someone running a session, someone who owns a facility, can share their can put their data online on the internet in one place in one data feed, and that data feed is then openly available for whoever wants to use it. So it can it can be used over and over again in loads of activity finders. So as you say, lo lots of active partnerships already have open data um, activity finders which pull that data in and um, everybody moves is, is just another example another one of those activity finders at, but it's all pulling in the data from the, from those same places so it's it's no extra effort for the activity providers to to share the data with each of those different activity finders and um, each of those activity finders pulls the data from that one one data feed so it makes life life easier for, for everybody Hopefully that's that brilliant. answers your that's, answers your question. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's great. Just one last question then, which is just a technical one. Um, yeah. So one of the things I was really impressed by when I fir first had that discussion around open data was, uh, I think the whoever uploads the data, as it were, around the session, the activity, there's a there's a process where there's a, a, a an ongoing loop, as it were, around communication, so that if ever that session stops, effectively there's a mechanism in place to kind of capture that because whoever uploaded it needs to effectively, whether it be monthly, whatever, just confirm that on an ongoing basis. Is 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 that is that still the case? And have I understood that correctly? Yes, you have. Yeah. So it, it's done differently by different platforms. But yeah, most platforms will put in some sort of mechanism for for checking when it was last updated or, or last uploaded. Um, uh, but yeah, that that does vary slightly for, from platform to platform to platform. But yeah, I've, Open Active has a, a whole community, uh, you know, a lot of people on this call, but, you know, act, as well as active partnerships who you mentioned, there's also NGBs and um you know, software system providers and um, local authorities and leisure operators. And there's a there's a whole load of organizations that are um, actively involved and actively um, sharing or, or using data. That's great. Thank and you just so much. to tail on the last one of that, um, I'm aware of I've had quite a few meetings with um, a number of your colleagues uh, over the last kind of four or six months. And the Ignite network that you've got for Bristol, um yeah. all of those clubs uh in in a few days actually will be reached out to via the representative there to upload via everybody moves um and then all of that data will be uh in, in what you were saying there it will be administered by the clubs so they'll be in charge of their own listings to make sure that they're fresh and up to date um you've got uh london um the manager for there they've partnered with london sport for that that's right so ultimately yeah. because it goes out into open data it still ends up across all these great finders um, and ultimately ends up with us uh, everybody moves ahead of the games which is which is great but there's those different ways to go that's that's absolutely fine at the end of the day whatever works if you've got your own finder and you can make that uh open active compliant great and in the case of ignite where we're going to work with the clubs to bring all of that data in on an individual basis 
we're happy to work there and, and support as needed. So, um, yeah, lots and lots of ways to do it. Right. Brilliant. And just so you're aware, Lizzie leaves on Friday. It's her last day. So if you haven't yet sent her an email or, or actioned that, then 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 do that. That's that's great. And thank you, everybody. That was really helpful. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Um, I'm keen to move on because just because Ian's been very patiently waiting with his, with his hand up. But just to say, if, if you um, want a further conversation uh, after this call, I'm, I'm very happy to ha ha arrange a call with you and chat through Open Active in a bit more detail, if that would be helpful. Um, Ian, thank you very much for, for waiting so patiently. No, thank you, Tim. And um, thanks, Baden, for that really good presentation. Um, I think this is really, really timely for us. Um, as a national inclusive cycling charity, for many years, we've been creating hubs, um, supporting local authorities and leisure trusts and other charities to, to develop their inclusive cycling programme. And what was clear to us quite a few years back before the pandemic was that there was lots of good stuff happening out there, but there wasn't any kind of policy kite mark of delivery. Um, one of the things that we've wanted to do for some time is, is to test that um, kite mark and we recently received some funding from Sport England to actually look at this on a national platform so um, what we're doing at the moment is creating a, a, I suppose a set of standards of you know ways of working um, which fit around obviously participation experience quality of equipment in in the cycling hubs um, volunteer experience, trails and route um, risk assessment. So just creating that quality standard, really. And, and what we want to do is, you know, as soon as you create a hub and a set of standards and you, and you launch it and you announce where that hub is, you know, people will pick up on that on, on any kind of portal and they'll be expecting, you know, a, a, obviously a quality service, a quality experience. So we're, we're literally working hard on, on launching what that service should look like with quite a few of our local authority uh, withdrawal hubs, some of our internals and some national partners. So it'd be really good to talk to you to see how we can take all this learning and just bring it to, to your framework because um, it, it, it's something that, you know, is, is growing and there's lots of good quality inclusive cycling hubs um, we just want to nudge them in the right way that they're, you know, working to a set of standards. So, yeah, this is really timely and be really good to talk to you, you know, offline about how we can just share what we've learned and um, bring it into the fold of what you're doing, at, you know, with um, your great work. Absolutely. Yeah. Happy to pick up on on any of those bits and have conversations um, or anything you want to ask that way. Uh, yeah. Just reach out. Fantastic. Thanks, Ben. You know, um, I can happily connect you, connect you after the call. Uh, that's no problem at all. Um, John, over to you. There we go. Um, yeah, just uh, a few questions, if that's all right. And um, we're kind of uh, at the moment tasked with putting together a platform through Mencap Sport of um, opportunities for people learning disability to get fit and healthy and active. Um, and so we're exploring the opportunities for the open active data and how we go about it. But obviously that's not going to happen uh, before the Olympics and Paralympics. So um, it seems that it's a great opportunity for us to publicise this opportunity out to the organisations that we work with to then be able to get themselves logged on and signed up to the Everybody Move platform. If I'm right in thinking later down the line, we managed to get our own uh, open data feed on our website, those opportunities would automatically come through to us if we search, if somebody searched, for example, for learning disability opportunities. Is that, have I got that right? Yes, you do. Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you um, encourage your clubs to to publish their data as an open active uh, compliant feed, um, then it will be able to be fed into um, Everybody Moves, um, which would be great. I'm sure Baden would be delighted to to have that um, uh, on the platform. Um, but yeah, uh, at whatever point in the future you you are able to build or desi design or, or um, get your own platform off the ground. As long as it's able to pull in open data feeds, you know that that feed will be there, and you, and you can use it on um, on your platform as well. So yeah, as as I was outlining to Jason, that's one of the the kind of benefits and the and the real driving points for for Open Active as an, an initiative. And 
for the sector that it, if clubs are able to publish that that data as, in the right way, in the right format, in an open, active, standardized way, um, then that data feed is then available for for whoever. So you know everybody moves can use it. The active partnerships can use it on their activity finders. Uh, you'd be able to use it on your own um, main cap activity finder. You know where wherever who who that data is freely available for for whoever. And wants to use it and, and it's no extra effort for, for the activity provider they, they just have to have put it in that one place in that one feed and then it's uh available for everyone which is which is great for the benefit yeah, of everyone yeah. and it just extends that reach and means more more people can find it in more more different places and it's likely that um you know more people will be active and more people will be um taking part in these opportunities as a result which is which is what we're we're all here for we're all, all after getting more people more active so and then I guess to follow that up, um, maybe for Baden, uh, it's not um, <clears throat> excuse me, Paralympic sport specific. It's just for sport and physical activity. It's not limited to. This this is the cool thing about where this sits is we can go beyond what would be classifiable impairments. We can go beyond what are classic uh, Paralympic disciplines. Um, I love it that we can do that. And we can celebrate everything from like the Miles Without Styles initiative. We can celebrate just getting out and having a walk or doing it in a way that suits you yeah it's brilliant wcmx if you've ever seen that that blows my mind that stuff's great um mm -hmm. basically what you go to a skate park to do on a bmx in a wheelchair it's awesome mm -hmm. uh, there's there's all these amazing things that we can really celebrate and i love having i'm sure some people higher up than me would hate me saying this but i love having that freedom away from what can be yeah, quite sure. narrow in some of the paralympic disciplines and that that's great to be celebrated but yeah absolutely everything if it's a form of movement we're there for it and then i guess my final question would just be um I, everything has an end lifespan um i guess what's your where are you kind of funded up to through toyota and do, is there a um like is there an end point or have you got support uh, and resources for indefinitely <laughs> I'm unsure what I'm allowed to tell you. Um, <laughs> let's enough. just say I'm not worried about my job for a couple of cycles, let's say okay, that. Okay, okay, um, great, great. As to what that looks like, I know that um, for the 10-year strategy, Everybody Moves was written into that. So that's the 10-year okay. strategy for Paralympics GB as a whole, and it forms an integral part of uh, the social impact strategy that will be released um, near the Games. Um, and actually what Paralympics GB are doing now is we're shifting towards the organization being around about 50% towards social impact. So I'd say that we're, I, I'm not worried, let's put it that way. I can't tell you why I'm not worried, but I'm not. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, so that has brought one final question um, in, in my mind. Um, so is there an Everybody Moves portal that, you, that other people can have on their websites or is is it kind of, transition through to everybody moves i guess how would that work if, we, if we're looking to develop a portal then naturally you've already got the portal so could we have kind of like a an access everybody moves on our website or is or would it just be send them to you again that would be kind of with the open data feed i suppose is that you would then look to house the search results where you are um i mean which is a far easier way sometimes i'm just aware of time so i might I, i'm happy to pick this up if we haven't got enough time to do it um but yeah to actually have the feed show or, or be searchable within your website is is quite an easy solution um overall so yeah lots of options there the other thing just to quickly touch on as well with some um bigger organizations that we've worked with rather than going to um kind of club level for that what we've done is that organization has got gdpr rights and actually bulk uploaded all of their sessions almost as like a test case to show that to all the clubs that this is worth doing and we've done it for you this time and it's valid for a year let's say so come next year we actually want you to take ownership of it but have a look and this is how good it's been um whether or not that that means that you move it to your own thing and you have your own upload process but lots of ways to do it and happy to pick up the conversation for sure brilliant thanks Baden. great thanks Jonah, and thanks Baden. we're just coming to the sort of last minute of the of the call now so i just kind of um put out a last call for any any last thoughts or last questions or comments um or, or any other business um as we as we reach the last minute cool okay if not, I've got one if we can then just to end on that is yeah, that opportunity is huge and I'm more than excited to share it with you all so let's go take it I think it'd be great for all the amazing activities that you run to have them out there 
Um, whether that's for your own uploaders, whether that's for everybody moves, we don't really mind, but let's make sure that wherever anybody searches, there's an activity that they're going to be able to find. And I think that'd be amazing. Fantastic. Thanks, Baden. And yeah, a great, great call to action to um, to close on there. Um, I'd just like to say uh, a, a big thank you to Baden for for coming on the call and also Darren for for presenting as well. I think it's um, been a really great session. Um, and I'd also like to to thank all of you for for coming along and attending it and making the, the session what it is with your with your really um, you know insightful comments and questions and participation. It, you know, it's what makes these meetings what they are. So. Um, and great to to have some new faces on the call as well. So th thanks very much for joining. Really appreciate it. Um, the next uh, open active community meeting will be in two weeks time. Will be a W three C community group meeting, and the next adoption engagement forum will be four weeks from today. Um, so yeah, if uh, you're not already, please join the Open Active Slack workspace, as I mentioned at the start of the call, and, and that's um, the best place to keep in touch with all of these kind of Open Active conversations and, and what's going on. Um, and I hope to see uh, some of you on some of those future calls. And um, thanks once more for, for joining and, and hope you all have a good afternoon and rest of your day.